And don't forget to send me a postcard from the Muppet Studios. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I can't do that, Walter. But, Gary... Because... You're coming with us! <gasps> Book your next Disney vacation with Kristen Hetzel of Magical Journeys Travel, an unconventional agency for the unconventional client. Magical Journeys is dedicated to finding the best pricing for your next magical journey. Wait a minute. I love that idea. Kristen will work hard to save you money and give you the quality of service you deserve. As a well-established agency and an authorized Disney vacation planner, Magical Journeys Travel has many years in the travel industry and in dealing with the infamous Disney reservation system. Let Kristen help you plan your next magical journey journey to book travel or for a free quote please contact Kristen hetzel at www.magicaljourneystravel.com forward slash Kristen. follow her on twitter at Kristen hetzel All right. come on everybody magical journeys an authorized disney vacation planner you're listening to a weeby geeks network podcast the dining at disney podcast the dining at disney podcast you know the thing about good food it brings folks together from all walks of life. Your ultimate source for the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resort. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. The Dining at Disney Podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Welcome to another episode of the Dining at Disney Podcast, your ultimate source for delicious discussion about dining at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. I am your host and foodie, Kristen Unfortunately, Bubba is not with us today, but instead I have two very, very special guests. I have John from WDW Park Hoppers and Tony, who is from Disney by the Numbers. They both together host the Disney Parks podcast. How are you guys doing today? Uh, good. How about you? I am doing wonderful. Partially because I am yeah. very excited to hear about your experience. Because both of you, on behalf of Dining at Disney, That's right. went over to Four Seasons Orlando and checked out Ravello's menu for Visit Orlando's Magical Dining Month. Yeah. So we're going to be definitely digging into that tasty dish a little bit later on the show. Um but we are going to start off with talking about what Visit Orlando's Magical Dining Month is and um, what restaurants are participating. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the Walt Disney World area. Um, there's plenty of areas that, that are included in this, and it's a really cool thing. Um, now, I know, Tony, you've done this several times. I know, John, you and yep. Sarah look forward to this as well. Yep. It's kind of like yep. one of those things that you go, September, because usually it kicks off in September. Um, Break out the stretchy pants. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and, you, you know, you kind of have to save up some money. You know, you're like, you okay, do. well, we can splurge here because this is coming up. If you stick to the plan of just buying the meal, it's okay. It's once you start doing wine pairings and add-ons, that just you know, and cocktails and things like that, then that starts driving up your, your, uh, your bill, and it right. make, makes the month a mess. And the worst part is, is it's also coming at the same time of uh, Epcot's Food and Wine Festival, mm -hmm. so you're really torn because it's like I really want to, to have you know the food and wine experience, but at the same time, it's like, gosh, I mean. How could you say no to thirty five dollars for STK or you know paddlefish or places that you yeah. know for thirty five bucks you can barely get an appetizer and a coke? Oh yeah, right. yeah. and we're not just talking thirty five dollars. We're not just talking like the entree. This is like a three course meal. Yep. Yeah, and most places that we've uh, that we've gone to, I don't think they really downsize the portion. Um, and I'll. Uh, you know, some places do different things. Like Rovello does something different, <clears throat> whereas they create a specific menu. I think there's one item or, or a couple items, actually, that is on their normal menu. But uh, they also then create dishes that is not on their normal menu just for the magical dining. So, right. so you, you get a little bit of that. But I don't think – I mean, John, from all the places we went to last year, I mean, did we walk out hungry? Not really. No, absolutely not. Um, there were, there were. If they don't change the size of the menu, what they're offering is a little bit different. 
uh, it's not necessarily a portion size because it's not something that they offer on the menu. It's something that's specially created just for this. And that, that is part of what makes this whole magical dining month. So dare I say magical because a lot of times you're getting a flavor of the restaurant, but it's something that is not on the menu every day of the week. So it's, it's even more special because of that. Yeah. And a portion of all the proceeds do go to a charity too. So, yeah, absolutely. That makes it even, even more better. And I think it magical dining's partnered with American express. So that, that is also one of the reasons they can do it. But uh, $1 from each meal goes to support a uh, free ride and base camp children's cancer foundation. So that's huge. Uh, so not only do you get a great meal, you also get to do some good. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about it is <laughs> it's for a good cause. You know, they add that into it. And so it makes you feel a little bit better about the fact that you're going out to eat that night when, you know, normally you might be cooking at home. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it it just makes the, uh, Bucantini, just that much more flavorful. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, you're probably eating it at a restaurant that, you know, like some of the restaurants on Restaurant Row have incredible views of the lake behind, or you're at, at someplace at Walt Disney World, or you're someplace in, in, in Universal, or somewhere in downtown Orlando that you would probably <laughs> not necessarily financially, depending on your economic level, but I mean, you might not be able to afford it any other way. So it's just, it's just a win-win all the way around. Yeah. And they have, they have over a hundred restaurants this year. Uh, and they broke it down to, they have what they call these districts. So there's the convention area, obviously around the convention center. Uh, there's the Disney, uh, Lake Buena Vista area, downtown Orlando restaurant row. And that's, uh, near universal, uh, Sand Lake. Uh, there's then surrounding areas, so kind of some outlying restaurants, Universal City Walk, and then Winter Park is the last area. Right. Yeah. Which so. gives you a lot of places to choose from if you're visiting Definitely. Orlando. You know, not just people who are visiting Disney. You know, other people have plenty of areas to uh, to check out. So if you're going, you know, SeaWorld or Universal, or you're just going downtown, you know, you're just – visiting and seeing Orlando as a whole, I mean, right. plenty of people to still enjoy a really good deal. Yeah. And the, the great thing is uh, a couple of years ago, we went to this restaurant that just had this amazing name called the ravenous pig. And mm. my, my wife and I went there, uh, we had magical dining there. And then the following year we actually took some friends, maybe wasn't the most magical experience we've ever had at that restaurant but you know we we've eaten there enough times to know that the quality of the food and the experience is really good and then come to find out the uh owners of the restaurant open up a, a, a location at disney spring called the polite pig so we're able to enjoy it in a in a different way and it's been great to see the progression from you know we we went there for magical dining we got to know the people who own the place and now they're at disney springs right down the road from it so that's that's just really cool to be able to be a part of that yeah and it's a good time to you know try a restaurant that you know maybe you thought was a little on the expensive side uh now that you're getting a three course meal for 35 bucks you're you know, feeling as guilty uh, or even just try a new place that you've always wanted to try and you just never got around to. Now, when was the first time, the first time I went and tried, because Al John and I used to always go in September right. um, because of our anniversary. Well, then it just got to the point where I don't do well with the heat. And I said, let's postpone it and, and travel the last week of October. Mm. Um, but two years ago, we went and we went and did the blue zoo menu with you, Tony. Oh yeah. Right. And then last year again, we came in September and we did, um, we did all of us did Ravella together along with, um, Robin and Robin who created, um, my logo, my husband. And then of course, uh, John's lovely wife, Sarah. And I also then did, um, other than Ravello, Al John and I decided to try STK Orlando, and that was the first oh, yeah. time we had, had dined there. Right. And I'll tell you, considering the fact that you got the same size fillet, 
Like, and you pay more for than the cost of doing the dining. Right. Was was pretty awesome. Yeah. We, was it last year we went to STK, John? That we were doing shots with the manager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year was the first yeah. year they were open. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 We, yeah. We got to know the manager, and he, he liked our attitudes. <laughs> and he was like, hang on, I'll be right back. And then shots appeared at the table. <laughs> and, nice. and it's... You know, it's it's just it's a crazy experience, and, and that restaurant, that's the one restaurant that I wanted to go back to. Yeah, I mean, there's several, but I, I definitely want to go back to STK because otherwise, there's no way we can afford it. I know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's too much for us as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I will say, for those who are you know are listening and you're wondering what all is included for the thirty five dollars. It does include the three course meal. So you're going to get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert for that. So it's a nice full meal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Tony, do you, do you want to go through the list of uh, the restaurants in the Walt Disney World area? Sure. Okay. I'll uh, do that real quickly. I had them. Restaurant food downtown. Okay. Uh, so the, guys, is that really? Maybe it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Disney Lake Brader Vista, the uh, first one on the list is the American Kitchen Bar and Grill. I'm not even sure where that is. I think that's the uh, B Resort. Oh, yeah, it might be, yeah. Uh, then there's uh, Andiamo. Uh, there's Benihana. I think there's a couple of Benihanas on the list. Uh, yeah, this is the one that's in the Lake Point of Vista Hilton. Right. Uh, the Black Fire Bull Brazarian Steakhouse. I think Brazilian. that's over, yeah, Brazilian. I think that's over on. Um, it's right outside of Disney Springs. Yeah, it's over like on you Parkway. Out past all those ho- hotels right. and stuff yep. like that. Yeah, right. it's right yeah. on the other side of. Oh, I just forget the um, Parkway. Uh, five twenty, five twenty-eight. Palm Parkway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's Palm right. Parkway. So, yeah, that's a cool little place. It's got yeah. a lot of really cool restaurants there. Yep. Uh, next up is over at Disney's uh, Port Orleans Boatwright Dining Hall. Um, actually, they're on also Disney's uh, now Table in Wonderland and that extra thirty percent discount. So you can <laughs> you can dine there a couple different ways this year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you and if you time it right, you can go have dinner and then go watch Yeehaw Bob out in, yeah. the, uh, out in the lounge area. Yep. I still have yet to see Yeehaw Bob. Is that not crazy? For reals? We got to do that when you guys Seriously. come Seriously, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the more than 60 trips I have taken now wow. to Disney World, I have yet to see Yeehaw Bob. You better do it before they wow. shut it down. <laughs> That'll happen. Uh, I will. It's just a matter of time. Uh, All things change. Yep. Uh, next is uh, Deep Blue Seafood Grill. Yeah, we went there last year. That yep. was the first place we went last yeah, year. Yeah, that's at the Wyndham, right? Was that the Wyndham? Wyndham Grand Orlando yep. Resort on the creek. Yep. Uh, next up is the Grand Floridian Cafe. Uh, that's on the I'm first floor. The be. first <laughs> floor on the Grand Floridian, I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, next is Hemingway's. We missed that one, I think. Yeah, I think we. I think we I was heading the there, room. and then you got sick, or Sarah got sick, or something. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember, but yeah. I, I knew it was planned, but yeah. we didn't. We chose yeah. not to at the last one. And that's at yeah. the Hyatt Regency. Right. Uh, Grand Cypress. Right. Uh, we've eaten at that the other Grand Cypress over at the golf course. We ate at that place when you. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, next yep. up is Il Molino, New York Trattoria. Uh, and that's over at uh, Swan Dolphin. And I don't, I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but I've not had a good experience there. And I've been there oh, three, no. at three times, so it makes me mad. But anyway, that's just me. I've, I've been there a few times. It's been pretty good. Yeah, We've had it pretty good till the last time Al John and I went, and he was like, I don't know that I want to come back here anytime soon. Yeah. I mm-hmm. See, that's Terrible the feeling I had. Fun. Yeah. Uh, next up is over at uh, mm-hmm. Animal Kingdom. They got the Jico, the cooking place. Uh, then you got Landry's Seafood. And letterpress, and I'm not even sure where letterpress is. Letterpress is over at the uh, Lake Buena Vista Palace, the really tall hotel Ooh, right next yeah. door. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's okay. I, I would. I, mm, it's okay. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, next up is uh, my punch card is full, Mary Moto Asia. Yeah, Tony's never <laughs> been to that place. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't know me by name there yet. I really. I was going to ask you that <laughs> if they knew you by name as often as you eat there now. Uh, I will tell you a story when we start yeah. talking about Ravello <laughs> yeah. that, that will explain how it is when you go have dinner with Mr. Casanova. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, next up is uh, Olivia's uh, Cafe over at uh, Old Key West. And actually, I was just there a couple weeks ago. So yeah. That, yeah, I liked it there. Cool. It's a little kind of off the beaten path, and it's never really crowded. You can kind of walk in and get a table. Mm -hmm. uh, the new paddlefish at Disney Springs is open. Yay. Yep. I love it. Have you been there yet? Yes. Wait, that's right. You did a preview, right? No. Uh, no. Uh, we went there like opening, like a, I don't know. The day after they opened, like okay. Sunday, yeah, uh, not through media. I paid my way. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Ravello. Obviously, we're going to talk about that ad nauseum. Uh, and then we have STK. John mentioned STK at Disney Springs, uh, the Turf Club, and that's over at Saratoga Springs. Yep. Uh, the Wave at the Contemporary, and Todd English a Blue Zoo is back on the list. And uh, we're going to think about it. This is a record number of. Disney restaurants. Disney restaurants at 12. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of Disney right. restaurants to enjoy. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, and, and most every one of them is completely worth it. Uh, and, you know, especially the Disney, Disney restaurants or even the Swan mm. and Dolphin. Just the atmosphere alone makes it worth it. Todd English's Blue Zoo is one of our favorite places to go, at least mine and, and Sarah's. We, we love that place. It's so good. Yeah, I wish they would add a few more of the signature restaurants, you know, like California Grill or Artist Point or Yachtsman Steakhouse or, you know, Flying Fish. Flying Fish, yeah. You know, some of the some of the places that you go, I really don't feel like spending thirty dollars just for an entree. At least, you know, that allows you to go there, try some of the food, and go, hey, this is a place maybe I might come back to. I don't see yeah, I think, doing that with something like a California Grill, but you know, for Artist Point, which that's not one of the the first places people think of no. going to eat when it comes to Disney signature dining. Right. So something like that would sure. be really cool if they added added to that list to kind of get more people knowing about it. You know? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah. See you. Okay, so we've got the whole list of places, and both of you went to Ravello. So let's talk about your experience at Ravello. Going to Ravello <laughs> or the Contemporary Resort with Tony Castelnova is like going anywhere with uh, a rock star. You walk in, everybody walks up. Oh, Mr. Castelnova, Mr. Castelnova, how you doing this evening? Uh, the wait staff comes up. Oh, Mr. Casanova, how are you? Uh, the sommelier walks up. Mr. Casanova, such a pleasure. Welcome back. The chefs all come out. Like the entire the entire cooking staff just comes out and it's like, you know, oh, Mr. Casanova's here. So uh, at this point, it's just embarrassing. It's it's completely embarrassing. It's like, oh, you're with Mr. Casanova. Oh, that's great. Oh, Mr. Casanova, how's your day? I'm like, what? I'm just chopped liver here, but. You know, it's. Um, now, I will say, you know, last year when we went to Ravello and we had that amazing experience, it was not because Tony had made the reservation. <laughs> right. It's because I had made the reservation <laughs> right. with Dana, right. who is absolutely amazing right. and super kind. Um, so, but what's funny is since then, the number of people, like, I'm, I'm going to be walk in there and be like, where are all these new people? They've had so much turnover oh, yeah, in the right. past year there yeah. that I'm just like, I'm glad yeah. Dana's still there, though. Yeah. And even when we did, you know, all go together, the chef came and Michael, mm -hmm. the, the manager came. So it is uh, it is fun. It, 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 it is kind of <laughs> a little on the weird side. Having, <laughs> I mean, when I was there two weeks ago with my brother, I mean, there were servers coming across, like, the dining room to say hello to Mm -hmm. which, which is weird. And then the, you know, Fabrizio comes out and he's talking to us and he only really came to our table and then walked back and that was it. He was done, you know? So, but it's, I it's, think that they think that you're related to Bob Iger or something. <laughs> That's the story I told them. 
I'll yeah. t- I'll, you know what though from all the years that i waited tables and worked in a restaurant and you know you just people who regularly come and and see you and dine there mm-hmm. if they're nice you're gonna go out of your way to make sure you stop by and say hi because even right. as a server when certain people would come into our restaurant, if I even if I wasn't waiting on them, I would stop by and be like, "Hey, how you doing this evening?" You know, right? What, you, know. what yeah. did you order and and that kind of stuff because you you they build a rapport with you. Yeah, and here's the other thing: it's the key to the guest service experience at the Four Seasons. It's what makes the Four Seasons the Four Seasons, and why Disney is Disney. Yeah, and it's right. a completely different experience. I mean, I've never stayed at the hotel, but I can tell you, you know, every time I go there, I have a great experience because of the staff. Oh, and absolutely, absolutely. And I've told the story before. I don't know if I've told it on a podcast, but uh, I went. My wife and I went sometime. We were doing something, uh, going to dinner, and you know, I drive a pickup truck, and I wasn't necessarily dressed up. And there was a, a gentleman with a suit, uh, you know, just welcoming people, happened to be standing in the front door. He was, he was apparently talking to one of the valet people. And, and uh, I walked past. He was like, hey, welcome, welcome. How are you doing tonight? And I was like, I'm great, I'm great. And his name tag, basically, I, I picked up on the fact that he was like the whole hotel manager. He's like the grand poobah of the hotel. And he was just falling over himself, trying to make sure that I was having a great day. Mm. Wanted to find out what are you doing? I think we're go- we're going to Ravello. Oh my gosh, have you been to Ravello? Yeah, it's great. It's one of our finest restaurants. It's so great. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I'm like, yeah. We were- uh, I know uh, Chef Fabrizio through a friend. He was like, oh, that's great. So, I mean, he really went out of his way. And I'm just some Joe schmo. I wasn't a resort mm. guest. And that's the level of customer service. And, and really, honestly, uh, the Four Seasons on Disney property is, is the hands-down best hotel as far as customer service goes. Uh, they give Disney a run for their money over there. And I, and I know I'm probably freaking some Disney people out. But yeah. honestly, man, those, those guys over there are really giving Disney's customer service a run for their money. And it's, oh, it's outstanding. Four Seasons has one of the best customer service experiences anywhere. I'm not just, not just Disney, not just Orlando, yeah. but as a whole, they do. And the only other place that I have been that I have received customer service like that has been at the Waldorf Astoria. Yeah. You know, mm. it's that same, same caring and right. wanting to make sure you're enjoying yourself. And if something is wrong, then we will fix it immediately and we, we will do more than apologize for whatever yeah. little error we may have have had. So, I mean, right. it's, and, and that's why I love going over there. You know, it's, yeah. it's that amazing experience um, that you get, you know, in, in right. Nashville, there's a mall that has, you know, the Tiffany's and the Louis Vuitton and all of huh. those very pricey things. If I walk there in what I'm wearing right now, which is my Epcot International Festival of the Arts figment nice. t-shirt and my jean shorts, um, and walk into a store, they're going to just ignore me. Right. You know? Whereas, like you were saying, John, you were just, you know, <clears throat> as casual as can be, and you right. still got top-notch service. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And the only the only other place that I think I've had, because I've been to the Waldorf and I've been to a couple of other places at Bonnet Creek. But honestly, my my benchmark for just generic old theme park customer service is the Lowe's Resorts over at Universal. Mm-hmm. See, They're I have equal. yet I have yet to visit those. Oh my I gosh. Need you need to go over, in my opinion, I'm not telling you what to do. But sometime, and if you need a lift when you're down here, I, I, I don't know if you guys are driving or not, but if you need a lift, we will gladly take you. You need to take uh, your hubby over to the Hard Rock Hotel and just at least just have cocktails over in their uh, their velvet lounge just to see mm. all the memorabilia and just the way they – I mean, like, it's, it's high-quality customer service from folks who are – tattooed up and they've got mohawks and they look like hardcore rock and rollers but it's like yes ma'am yes sir how may I help you it's like 
it's a weird dichotomy of you don't look like you're that kind of person, but man, they bend over backwards. And plus you get all the cool rock and roll stuff there too. So oh, that it's worth yeah. a trip just for that. It's been a really long time. I think it might have been our is it our honeymoon, maybe? You can also visit Either Merchant that or like maybe in, maybe it was like oh six or oh seven or something. It's been a long time, but we had gone over there at least ten years ago. Yeah. Um because I, I collect what most people don't realize is you know the um the pens that they have, I collect those. So I've got um like tons of the guitar ones. Oh really? And I collect them from all over the world. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So of course and you I can, uh, get one from there. You can visit the merchandise that Robin created for the hard rock there. Oh Did yeah, that's really? true. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, his uh, his name is on the tags designed by Robin. Oh, cool. Yeah. No way. And, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And you can go over there and have cocktails and stuff and then just jump right over and go over to Portofino Bay and go to uh, Mama Della's. Uh, Mama Della. We've been there, Mama Della. It's so good, guys. <laughs> good. Anyway, <laughs> but back to Ravello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Back gosh, to the other Italian so place. <laughs> okay, Ravello. Let's talk Disney. Okay, you want to start? You want me to? I start, you can start with the appetizers. Uh, the appetizers. appetizers were incredible. They, um, uh, I'm, are you, are we, so we're going to go down the order of the menu, the menu that I'm looking at, uh, which is not necessarily the order that the food came out in. But the first thing they brought out was uh, ensalada mista, which is basically uh, an arugula and a green salad. The uh, vinaigrette was a, um, what's that say? Moscato. Moscato, I'm so blind. Uh, Moscato vinaigrette, which was just off the chain. Good. Yeah. Uh, it was great. It was a great uh, starter for the evening. And uh, how do you say that? Pulpatine? Pulp- S- and, uh, yeah, Pulpatine. Okay, so Senator Pulpatine, <laughs> uh, for you Star Wars fans. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, uh, an order of the meatballs that are uh, an incredible combination of mortadella, uh, pistachio uh, with their pomodoro sauce and mascarpone cheese. Uh, yeah. Just uh, yeah. So uh, the way they they make their meatballs with ground beef, pork, and then mortadella, and there's no breadcrumbs and no egg, so they are gluten free, dairy free, and they are the best tasting meatballs. Uh, the better than my grandmother, and I hate to say that. <gasps> How <What>? dare <laughs> you? <laughs> that's really that. Uh, that's how good they are. They're I would love to get the actual that, recipe. That says a lot coming from a very Italian family. I mean, yeah, listen, every restaurant, Italian place I go to, I order meatballs. Rick said one time when we were out, what are we like on the meatball tour? Because every place I was trying meatballs, you know, and these are I absolutely the best meatballs I, I've ever oh, had. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They're so good. Yeah. Um, and the sauce is to suck up and drink through a straw. Jeez, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's so good. So you want to tell them about the uh, charcuterie and cheese board? Mm. Oh, yeah, that was good. They're, they, ha- what they, have? they had two meats, two cheeses, and a olive tapenade. And it's not always going to be the same two meats. Uh, it depends on what they can get uh, so that they can make sure that everything they're bringing in is fresh. Right. Um, so they served us mortadella and prosciutto di parma. Uh, but... That may not be what you get on your charcuterie, and I'm sure if you ask, they'll tell you what will be uh, the meats and the cheeses. Right. We, we had, had a fun, Fontina and uh, Gorgonzola. Gorgonzola, right? Right. Yeah. So they they gave us a nice uh, fair amount of the black olive spread, and then they had a very small sample cup of the uh, what do you call that? Gar- jar- 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 Jardinera. Yeah, Jardinera. Yep. Yeah. So that was that was great. They're also doing something very different uh, as an add-on. So those are those are the choices uh, that you can pick for your your appetizer. You've, but, you've, you've got the gelato parmigiana. Oh yeah, geez, gosh, that was. Go ahead, tell tell them about yeah. that. So they had another salad. It was a gelato di parmigiano, and it was uh, some mixed greens. They call it art- artisanal lettuce, uh, t- tomato vinaigrette. But then they had. Parmesan 
gelato on the salad. These little bowls of, I think it was, I, 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 I think they made Parmesan gelato and they rolled it in Parmesan. Mm-hmm. And it was, I could have had a plate of those and tossed the salad to the side. Yeah, so just kind of imagine like like a very soft, almost like butter consistency, mm-hmm. but it was just all that Parmesan flavor right. rolled in more Parmesan. And, you know, I know it's supposed to go with a salad. I, I was putting it on pretty much anything that wasn't nailed down. Uh, <laughs> the plate, the bread, Tony, um, <laughs> Tony's camera. Uh, I smeared some on my phone. It just, it, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot that. Yeah. They should really have a store where we can, where, where we could take some of these things home with us. But hey, can I have a box of those uh, Parmesan balls and some meatballs to go, yeah. please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what? If they did that, I would bring a cooler. <laughs> we'd be packing that stuff to take back home. They would double their they, they would, would double their restaurant revenue. Just with the, I would yeah. just hire Uber Eats to just keep delivering it yeah. every <laughs> every two weeks. It's worth uh, several hundred bucks. Just have yeah. Uber Eats. Deliver. Yeah. Uh, so what I started to say earlier was one of the things that they've done. So you've got you've got uh, your choice of those four appetizers, and then what they've done is they they for an upcharge you can order a a fifth appetizer, and it's basically uh, so it's got buffalo mozzarella, uh, prosciutto cotto. Uh, did I say it right? Yep. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, mascarpone and arugula, and it it was. Phenomenal! It was a great pizza, but they're they're offering that at, for a little upcharge, uh, which you know I, I was thinking about. You know, why would they do that? And then I thought, well, if there was four people and you were splitting dinner, you could each have one of the appetizers and sample it, and then you could order a pizza and split that four ways. So right. for four more bucks per person, it was totally worth it. Yeah, and uh, I asked the chef for prosciutto cotta because I never heard of it. You know, I've always heard of prosciutto, prosciutto de Palma. Uh, so prosciutto cotta is like a ham. It's baked, not cured like a, uh, a normal prosciutto de Palma is. And they don't put it on the pizza and then bake the pizza. They make the pizza and then put the prosciutto cotta on after it's done uh, with the microgreens of arugula. Right. So, so that prosciutto is not actually cooked with the pizza. Yeah, because I would imagine otherwise it would get really dry and maybe cooked. Yeah. Yeah, and right. it would be like a Virginia baked ham. Right. Exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. And then one of the things that we needed to mention was the tomato and mozzarella uh, gotcha. focaccia bread. Yeah. Just, hmm. It comes with a side of extra virgin olive oil uh, and herbs, and we actually got uh, a little side of, uh, of the um, sun-dried tomato spread. So it was yeah. just... Yeah. Bowl. And it was just bread, uh, and I'm a, you know I'm not a small dude anyway. So bread and you have me at bread and pasta, uh, <laughs> and it was just it was amazing. And yeah. just the the photos that we took don't even do even close to justice. But it it was so good. And that 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 first section of those those six things came out, and we were all stuffed, and we hadn't even gotten to the entrees yet. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank God they served the entrees uh, family style, so you didn't have to feel guilty and eat, you know, a whole plate of something. Right. <laughs> yeah. So what were the entrees, T? Uh, I'm going to start with my favorite, which was the uh, chicken puttanesca. Mm-hmm. Um, this, uh, <laughs> it was still, it, it, it had the perfect sauce with just the right bite of spice. Uh, it wasn't too hot. It wasn't overwhelming. Just... You know, you got the little heat in the back of your throat. You're like, oh, hey, this is pretty good. And then it came with fried polenta. Like, they were like uh, almost like mozzarella sticks of polenta, I think, rolled in some breadcrumbs and then fried, deep fried. Mm-hmm. And they were mm-hmm. delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, underneath that was kind of olives and capers. And they weren't the small itty-bitty. They were uh, a larger size caper. Uh, and it had a nice, good uh, brine to them. I think that was my favorite. Um, entree, and that is not on the normal menu, and I'd probably go back just to try that. Wow, absolutely! Yeah, my second go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. That's good. Uh, the second favorite one was the homemade bucatini omatrina, uh, and that is uh, 
Bucatini is a hollow pasta, kind of got like a little hole in it. Uh, and that was made with their pompadour sauce, kind of what they serve with the meatballs. And uh, I could have, I could have had a two pound bowl of that and, and not thought twice about it. It was uh, really good. It was perfectly cooked yeah. al dente. Um, it was not too soft, not too hard, just right in the middle. It was perfect. So, yeah, that was my favorite, and. I was a very good boy. There was a lot left between Tony and my's bowl and the people across from us bowl. Yeah. I was like, if I, how could I eat this and not look like a total pig? <laughs> it was, it was so good. I mean, the, the sauce alone was just incredible. Yeah. And, and then the, the pasta, I'm a sucker for homemade pasta mm -hmm. and the pasta there, the bu uh, bucatini was incredible, totally worth it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there was any meat in it. I, there wasn't any meat in it, was no. there? No. No. It's a popular totally worth, sauce. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a meat eater, but it's totally worth ordering. Yeah. Very filling. And good thing Great you mentioned. Yeah. And good thing you mentioned yep. it, too, because they do make all their own pastas. Everything is made fresh that day. It's not, uh, you know, they don't have it stored in some container in the back. Everything right. is made fresh daily there. Right. Uh, uh, and a lot of the stuff that they do create and make like the sauces they make from scratch nothing is you know pre-bought right uh the last item was a pesce spada and that was a swordfish uh now i had to look this up because i wasn't sure what this is it's called sal spazzo and it's a spicy salt that they used on this uh it came with roasted potatoes spinach and then more olives you can kind of get this mediterranean uh, olive uh, theme that they got going. Now, this swordfish, I am not a fan of swordfish. Uh, I would I would have probably never eaten it, but I figured let me try it. First of all, it looked like either a veal chop, a, a, a pork chop, or a piece of chicken. Perfect uh, cooking marks on it. Uh, not on the pale side, but just on the tannish side. And it was still moist. It was perfectly cooked. It was not pink in the center or fishy in the center. It was a perfectly cooked piece of swordfish. And I was blown away because, I, like I said, I am not a swordfish fan. Uh, so for me to like it <laughs> really, you know, kind of won me over. So Okay, so you got yeah, dessert, and, right? Yeah. yeah and then the, but the salt, the salt was really the capper on top of that, too. It was just – yeah. It was just all around. It's one of those dishes where, you know, somebody who's not necessarily a foodie foodie, you know, they say, oh, well, it's, we've got this, we've got this swordfish, we've got this special salt on it. And you're like, yeah, whatever. And then you try it and then you realize this, this is great food uh, because it just, it just made everything explode. It was just a, it was a flavor explosion. It was so uh, surprising because I, I've had swordfish before, mm. and it was kind of dry. And the swordfish is not my favorite style of, or your type of fish. Yeah. But um, the pesque spada, man, won me over. Yeah. Uh, so it was I, – I actually kind of liked it a little bit more than the chicken. The chicken was great, uh, but I kind of liked it more than the chicken. All right. There wow. you go. One for chicken, one for fish. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so the desserts, how they brought the desserts out for us was they brought – uh, a plank of wood and they had one of every dessert <laughs> and they actually brought more than they needed. And it was everything within me not to just go crazy and eat all of it. But, uh, the first dessert they had was, uh, what they're calling in a, an affogato, which mm -hmm. is basically a little cup of cafe espresso, uh, with uh, a dollop of vanilla homemade gelato in the center of it. Un believable and uh, i was awake it was great yeah. <laughs> so good very flavorful worked really well together um it was really good it's really good what were your thoughts on that one buddy it was good i i could have a bigger cup and a bigger piece of ice cream it was delicious yeah 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 and yeah. Uh, we looked up uh affogato means drowned in italian so they're drowning the gelato <laughs> in the espresso <laughs> I will not make the <laughs> obvious joke, but I'm thinking it. So, <laughs> so then, then they had, uh, I don't want to say just a cannoli. Yeah. <laughs> but they had a Sicilian cannoli. 
the ricotta was amazing uh, with its pistachio. And then they on the ends, they had candied orange. And they had something else that wasn't just orange, but they had uh, two candied fruits that were, mm. that were kind of pushed into the to the ricotta. It was truly amazing. And then they had uh, the pistachio was actually like a... Um, like a spread or cream. Yeah, like a cream. Uh, cream is like a dollop. Like, you know, if you would take chocolate and make it like a, a Hershey's Kiss. Mm. And it was that, but it was just purely pistachio. And, and mm. just, you put the cannoli through that, and then you put all the flavors together, and it was truly, truly a great dessert. It, it raised the level of just a cannoli to truly an amazing dish. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of my favorite desserts I have ever had has been a cannoli, and it was actually cannoli that I had in Sicily. Mm. I am and sure. I'll tell you, I was like... <laughs> Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I, anywhere that there's cannoli on the menu, like that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to well, go for. Right. Well, they also have, those are the two choices for the regular menu. For a $5 upcharge, you can get a uh, coffee tiramisu. And the coffee tiramisu was, I, I, I don't know what's better than incredible. But whatever that is, is that. <laughs> uh, it was a it was a very nice portion size. It had you know all the trappings of tiramisu, uh, some some chocolate, coffee beans, uh, as well as the little straws that normally come with tiramisu. It it it, it was amazing. It, it was beautiful to look at, but it was even better to eat. Yeah, yeah, and it's made with their uh, signature coffee too. Mm-hmm. Which Umbria? Yeah, Umbria. Umbria coffee. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the food. They also have three wines that they're featuring for this. Do you want to talk about that? Or do you want me to? You can hit up the wines. I'm not All a right. wine connoisseur. So the first wine that w- we sampled was the white, which is the Matteo uh, Corrigia Ar- uh, Arnese, uh, which is from Piedmont, Italy, which is where Chef is from. Uh, and I think that's going. Uh, was it fifty dollars a bottle? Yeah, fifty. Fifty dollars a bottle. Yes. Yeah, it's a, oh, okay. uh, and then they have okay, yeah, so fifty dollars yeah. a bottle marked down from sixty dollars a bottle. So Woo-hoo! you're saving yourself some money. Uh, so that was a white. It was great. It was uh, it was not too dry. wasn't yeah. too sweet. Uh, it was the perfect combination, especially when we were in the appetizer phase. Uh, it was really really good. I, I probably should have stayed with it. Although red that they had was a, a Chianti Classico from Toscana. Uh, which normally runs seventy dollars a bottle for uh, for this event. It's fifty five dollars a bottle. So, if you want a high quality, a uh, real premium Chianti, this is the time of year to go because you're saving yourself what was that fifteen bucks yeah. Uh, yeah. on a bottle. And then they have uh, an Enza Prosecco. Uh, so that's from um, was it Venito? Venito. Venito. Uh, and that's your sparkling wine, and that's forty five dollars a bottle. We didn't have that last night. This one yeah. we didn't have. Um, yeah. I would have liked I would to have try liked, that. Yeah, we'd like to have that rather than the red. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they started out the front the front end. They gave us the white, and as we moved into the entrees, they gave us the red. the The Chianti matched up with the Boncatini was probably the pairing of the day. Uh, obviously, because yeah. it's a nice hearty red sauce with a nice red wine. Uh, I would probably guess that the uh, the Pesca Spada would have been better with a white wine. The chicken actually would have been much better with the red wine. So yeah. those, those are my thoughts. Yeah, it's good. Now, they gave us a cocktail to start, too, which is, uh, I, I don't think, I think it was just for that day. It was called yeah. the uh, Eclipse of the Tart, you know. Like Eclipse the, of the Heart. The, the total yeah. Eclipse of the Tart. Yeah, total Eclipse of the Tart. It was a very tart cocktail, obviously. Uh, kind of made you pucker <laughs> pretty quick. Yeah, it's basically very like a uh, rat. Considering this preview was on August 21st yeah. when we had right. the total Eclipse. Right, right. right. So it's like a raspberry uh, on top of uh, a sour mix. Mm-hmm. So if you drank either one independently, it would have been really too much. But then you mix them together. And um, the social media person from um, the Four Seasons sat across the table from us, and, and I shared one of her videos. It was really great. So she had the, the drink, and it was split into two. 
and <laughs> she stirred it together. And I was like, well, I, I didn't think of that. And it actually was much better once I stirred it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a little powerful on the front end. Yeah. It was. A little, a little puckerish. Yeah. Puckerish? Overall, <laughs> puckerish. Out, out of 10, T, what would you say? You know what my number is. Do you have to ask, really? I just, well, I mean, I know you. I'm not sure everybody listens to the podcast. Listen, my vote's a 10. I would give this. I, I've never, ever gone here and had a bad meal. Right. You know, and it, listen, if you don't like something that you get, you know, maybe you're being a little adventurous and you're heading off the beaten path of what you normally eat and you get it and you take a couple bites and you don't like it. Trust me. If you say, hey, listen, I don't like this, they will make you something else and you will have it on your on your table. Lickety split. Yep, absolutely. So. And I agree. I would give this a, a 25 out of 10. Um, <laughs> not only, you know, and I, and I said this before, go there for dinner and and then if you're if you time it right, you know, grab go up to the top floor, 16th floor, go to Kappa, oh, yeah. which is their steakhouse, have a cocktail, step outside to their uh, to their balcony area, and you can watch the fireworks from the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and Hollywood Studios. They right. don't pipe in the music, still is completely worth it. Yeah, and we actually have all done that together. Oh uh, yes, we have. Yes, we have. And I think uh, one of us was playing. Uh, and Will, Will, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I think one of us was playing the music on their uh, iPhone as we were watching uh, Wishes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Chris, do we want to mention the other restaurants they have there while we're talking about Ravello? Um, mention the, like, just mention what they, let's mention what they are and the style of food. Yeah. And then maybe at another day, both of you come on and we do a discussion about sure all of the uh, Four Seasons restaurants. We'll do yeah. a Four Seasons special. Yeah, maybe we could get the chef on. That would be even better. Ooh, that way. We had him on the podcast when they first opened, so it's possible. <laughs> well, oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe he's a little busier now, but. <laughs> uh, all right, so up, John, John mentioned Kappa. It's up on the 16th floor. It's a, a Spanish steakhouse. We've. Uh, uh, John, have you eaten there yet? No, uh, John. I have there. not. I've not. I've not. Uh, I've not been lucky enough to eat up there yeah. yet. No. Okay, we'll have to make that happen one of these days. Uh, Tim Dorsey's the chef up there. Uh, then they have pool bar and grill. That PB and G. PB and G. That's over outside in their pool area. Uh, the executive chef there uh, moved over to. Their other place, Plancha, Chef Mikey. So Chef Mikey is now running Plancha. Oh, I didn't realize he was over at Plancha. Yeah, yeah, I just found that out uh, last night. Um, so Plancha is over at their golf uh, place. They're only open for lunch. They're open from like 11 to 4. And brunch. Yeah, and brunch on Sunday, Sunday. which is nauseating amount of food. <laughs> I mean, Go hungry. Yeah, it's an entire room filled with food. Uh, I don't know how else to tell people what it's like there. And you uh, get an entree too, <laughs> which nobody eats and everybody takes. No, it. oh yeah, you just and that's that's the cool thing is you can just tell them like when I'm done, I'll order my entree if y'all just box it up instead yeah. of bringing. It. Yeah, we were we were joking the other night that we said uh, the poor people in the kitchen are like we would like to put this on a plate once <laughs> because <laughs> because nobody does it. <laughs> Um, and that's uh, Planchet's over by their uh, golf resort. Um, I think, yeah. Oh, and there's Lickety Split, which is their uh, quick service. Uh, it's coffee, gelato, and all their uh, handcrafted uh, pastries. And the gelato is amazing. And the gelato is off the hook. Oh my god! Oh my god! We were there two weeks ago, and they gave us this whole sample of every single flavor they had. Wow. Think I don't think I don't live there, and I have dined at every restaurant at Four Seasons. Yeah, see, there you go. Wow, there, there go. really is not a place associated with the Four Seasons uh, dining establishment that that stinks. Everything is is a complete win, yeah. and it's just it's just a great. I mean, there's there's not a a, a bad one in the bunch. So I mean, if you're yeah. coming down. You got to go to the Four Seasons, and and it's on Disney property, so you don't have to stress about leaving property nope. for those of you who are 
Like, I don't want to leave Disney property. So Hey, and now, if you're staying at the boardwalk or the beach club or the yacht club, you can take your minivan to the Four Seasons. Yeah, buddy. Let's get that lift app out and knock yourself right over there to the uh, Four Seasons. That's, that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I would take uh, – that's where I'd go with my little minivan. <laughs> <laughs> It is cute. I can't wait to see it in person. <laughs> I'm going to do my car like that. I'm going to actually, no, I, I told Robin I want him to create me a Buzz Lightyear wrap. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. That would, yeah, everybody would know it. So it when I'm totally driving around in my Uber car, people are like, hey, are you at Disney? No, I'm not. But if you sign up for Uber, you can get a ride. <laughs> and I'm going to guess, John, if he had his vehicle wrap, would be Stitch, right? Right. <laughs> Probably, yes. I, I would think about doing that. <laughs> I don't hey, know I, what would you be. I might have to do like the Cheshire Cat or something. <laughs> yeah, you've had that on your uh, on your My Disney profile account. Yes, I have. Yeah, I love I the Cheshire the Cat. Love, was... love Beauty and the Beast. So yeah. yes, you have had Belle. Yep, Remy, Ratatouille, Beauty that movie, and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does that go, John? Beauty and the Beast. Okay, yes. so, so so that is our show. We have discussed everything about Magical Dining Month, as well as in great detail the delicious menu that you can find over at Ravello. So, Tony, John, tell everybody where they can find you, and uh, don't forget to mention our fun upcoming adventure. Oh, uh, sure. You want to start, John? Uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, we want to do our separate things or we want to do just the Disney Park stuff? Do both. Okay. If you're interested, you can find me, uh, Park Hopper John, over at www.parkhoppers.com. Uh, we love to, to talk all the things, Disney Parks, Four Parks, One World, and everything else in between. You can also click on uh, our little banner up there and you can try one of our Disney date nights. That's one of the things that we're trying to, to do a lot more of. And you can also find a copy of our uh, Disney Bucket List book. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at WDW Park Hoppers with an S on the end of it and WDW Park Hoppers.com. And where can they find you, Mr. Castle Nova, other than Ravello? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me in my named chair at Ravello, has my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, you know, can you imagine if they had one of those? You would totally have your name on it because, you know, <laughs> right, like, right on the road has one of those. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Bob Iger comes in and says, who is this Tony Casanova? Uh, don't worry about that, Mr. Iger. You're sitting in the back of the restaurant. Oh, here, here comes Mr. Casanova now. <laughs> You're sitting in the teaching kitchen. He's uh, sitting on the floor. Uh, right. Now, you can find me over at uh, DisneyByTheNumbers.com. Uh, uh, that's a website all about Disney facts and figures uh, from Disney World, Disneyland, uh, even some international stuff. Uh, October 1st, we're launching a brandy new website. Uh, you can also go and sign up for the Disney By The Numbers t-shirt club. You can't get one of these. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, but we do a t-shirt each month, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and they are cheap, and they are nice, good quality shirts that don't be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and they are very unique. They are one of a kind. Once we print, we're done, and we don't go back. Well, we haven't right. gone back yet. Uh and then uh, uh, me and John do a podcast together, the Disney Parks Podcast. And you can find that at DisneyParksPodcast.com. And we're on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can find us on all those things, too. We do two shows a week, typically. One is a news show, and one is an interview show. So uh, you can find that on your Stitcher, your iTunes, and all over. And this, not this weekend, the weekend after next, <laughs> September 2nd, we are having a party at a grand villa at Bay Lake Tower. If you'd like to get tickets, go to facebook.com, just like that. Go to facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast and click on events, and you can find tickets uh, for the event. Uh, it's, it's really cheap. It's just a couple bucks to help uh, cover some of the costs of the chips and dips and uh, drinks and all and that drinks. Yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you'll 
get to hang out with uh, Kristen and Al John and me and John and Robin and Robin and we uh, we just like to have fun and that's all it's about. And yep. I am even going to bring with me for the event. I will have some kind of special giveaway that I'm going to do. Ooh. Haven't decided Ooh. what all is going to be in the giveaway, but I will have some kind of some, something special. Excellent. I think we're all bringing stuff to give away. <laughs> Everybody's going to probably leave with something then. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And as far as both of your books, those um, guys, if you go to the Dining at Disney store on the website, you can click on the links to purchase both Tony and John's books. Excellent. Those are always on the Dining at Disney website. Oh, thank you so much. Excellent. Of course. As far as Dining yeah. at Disney, myself and Big Bubba B, you can find us at DiningAtDisney.com on social media, Twitter, Facebook, all those things. It's Dining at Disney. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into the podcast. I am so glad and thankful to have my wonderful friends, John and Tony, um, here today with me to discuss uh, Magical Dining Month. And... Uh, so as far as the podcast, you can stream that on Stitcher, download it on iTunes, and if you want to watch the video of all of us talking, you can catch that on YouTube. Um, if you're looking to help out the show, we are on Patreon, so you can always do that. There are links to the Disney Store Garden Grocer, which is an excellent place to get your groceries delivered to your Disney Resort. Um so all those links on the website that just puts like a little tip in our tip jar when you uh, when you click on our link to do any of your shopping. We greatly appreciate that. Until next time, bon appetit. This podcast was not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes. This program is powered by Tascam. Tascam's mini studio creator, US42, is your new personal production and online broadcast studio featuring a professional quality audio interface and a number of unique real-time effects. The mini studio creator delivers everything you need for your podcast or webcast. Find out more at Tascam.com, part of the Gibson family of brands.